I'm sorry it took this long, uh, but as you may know, this has been an interesting few months for me. Some hardship, yes, but also a renewed sense of purpose. Now, for me, the past is the past, and there is no benefit to you if I relitigate what was said and done involving my brother. And there are some outstanding legal fights that I have to respect. But let me be clear, I really do regret how everything ended, but I will never regret helping my family. I promised my father I would always be there for my brother, and I always will be, just like he has always been there for me, just like my sisters have been there for me and have been there for him. That's family. No. Former CNN anchor uh, Chris Cuomo there is announcing his comeback on a podcast from his house. He goes, welcome to my home, I'm gonna be podcasting. Which uh, more power to him, go ahead and podcast. But he did wanna start this whole thing talking about how he has no regrets surrounding what happened with his brother, the assistance that he gave him, which we're gonna mention in a second in case you forgot, but also who he really is. Let's dig into this uh, because again, if you guys forgot what he did mention there, what he helped his brother with was these sexual harassment claims against Cuomo, not Chris. The brother. Uh, what we know so far is what they said. Multiple women have accused the governor, Andrew Cuomo, of sexual harassment or inappropriate behavior. And that prompted calls for his resignation, which of course happened. Um, there was details from a particular woman, which you all heard from. Let's go down to graphic number three, because another thing that uh, Governor Cuomo was up to was the health agency under him misled the public on nursing home deaths. That was a big story during the COVID-19 thing, because they covered about just over 4,000 deaths, um, potentially to make uh, everything a little bit better within their state. Pretty much a Trump move. Uh, now, as far as Chris coming in here and the things that he does and regret that he got involved in there is graphic number four, you guys, because Chris Cuomo then took part in a strategy call advising his brother, yes, again, the New York governor, on how to respond to those sexual harassment allegations. This is he pathetic. didn't really point that. He Let's didn't point that out to CNN, pathetic. they found it out later. And after they found it out later, it all came down on him. And he's like, mm, eh, well, I mean, sure, yeah. Which I guess credit to him, he did point out that he did have something to do with that. Um, so no regrets there, which is part of why he lost his job, but he's back. I mean, the man has made so much money. <laughs> I never really think someone's like, oh, they lost a job after they've made tens of millions of dollars for 12, 15 years. They're okay, you guys, they're okay. But he just wants to get it out sometimes. This is what else Chris Cuomo wanted to get out to talk about who he really is and who he will be on this podcast. Let's watch. I love my father. I love my brother. I respect them both tremendously. But I'm no Democrat. And not simply because I'm in the media. And I am not here to make any of you feel comfortable being a lefty. Now, on the other side of the ball, I have Republicans, I have Trumpers among my friends. And I mean my real friends, not just, you know, people I take pictures with at events. But I'm not a Republican either. Now, here's the truth. I am not Democrat or Republican, but not because of what I think of them. It's because I reject both. I am anti the two-party partisanship. I don't believe in it. I think the two-party system is part of our problem. We need more parties, we need ranked choice voting at a minimum. Minimum, by the way, so uh, Chris Cuomo pointed out he's not a Democrat, he's not a Republican. And the reasons why those is because he's just, he's against that entire system and that entire process. And there's faults on both sides and we can't actually call ourselves one or another. By the way, and he said it with such force and, and, and such a, a, a gravity on the situation. You wouldn't realize that that's the majority of Americans. That's the thing. Yes, we've been told to corral ourselves in one party or another. But if you actually think about policies, which is what many folks who actually want to progress the country look at, which ones benefit you? And we find out where it goes. Don't mm -hmm. point out, oh man, my grandfather was a Republican. Oh, my grandfather was a Democrat, so I have to be. That's happening a lot less, even though people don't want to say it. So I, I think it's it's a decent point to be, but it's definitely not. Chris Cuomo's the first person that said he's not a Democrat or a Republican. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> it's per, it's a perfect way to frame your comeback as like, <clears throat> you know what I am? I'm the rebel. I'm the anti-establishment outsider. That's why you need to subscribe to this podcast. Because <laughs> I'm the, look, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm a Yang supporter. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said I'm an American. That's the line. 
That's like, the like the, yes, like a lot of people think this. I know that we could probably agree on some of these points that, like, yeah, I don't like Democrats, and I and I hate Republicans, as an you know anti-corrupt person, as a person who wants anti-corruption in their policies and in their government. Not really a lot of representation there, but he <laughs> wouldn't say anything like that. It would be more like this is how I'm pitching my comeback. Well, as let's being see. And as being right down the middle. And again, as you said, this is not new. This is what happens. But let me just go back to one thing in the very first piece of video that you played very quickly. When he said, you know, we don't have to get back into everything, I don't have to relitigate it. Well, duh, you're not going to relitigate it. You're suing CNN for like $200 million. Yeah. Obviously, you're not going to go relitigate it, bro. We already know that. But like, Look, I don't know if he signed a deal with Spotify. Personally, I think this is just from like a media perspective, brilliant move because you know who's going to love this if they ever see this is the older generation who watched CNN and made him number one on the network because those older folks, if they even know what a podcast is, they will put it on in their car when they still go to their office job downtown. And that's what I see his audience being. And very last point, mm -hmm. he mentioned Roger Ailes and Jeff Zucker in a positive light. So I just want to let you know where he stands on some of these things. The, the Definitely the only point I want to highlight from what you said was how smart of a move this is. Yeah, he still has a following. Yeah, he has still has people that liked his standard evening show. And yep. why not pop back and have people watch? I get it. That's now, you know what? I didn't have that big of a problem with Andrew, uh, not Andrew, with uh, Chris Cuomo and his approach as far as how he was on CNN. It's just who he was. You take it or leave it. Sometimes Sometimes I enjoyed him, sometimes I didn't. That's how life is. So yep. yeah, do your thing, bro. But you know, I, I guess I do give him some credit for addressing the same stuff that people already know and act not acting like it just didn't happen or he wasn't a part of it. It's true. It's what it was. It's who you are. And for people who still want to glom onto it, more I I I actually do believe in the uh, the op the free market. Go ahead, watch. I don't care. Maybe I will every once in a while if he says something worth listening to and and right. discussing. But. Here, here, very, very quickly, here's here's the weird part about all this is that like, as many people know, like we don't really have like a certain angle. We just call out people no matter who they are or what aisle of the political spectrum they are on. I will say it was probably like 2018 when I saw Jank and Anna only on Cuomo's show. So he did provide some of those opportunities, at least from what I remember being on a major network and then obviously that went away. What he did for his brother is terrible. It violates every single yeah. ethical notion of journalistic integrity that the network would have, which clearly was a conflict of interest in using his sources to then go after the yeah, um, man. The, the, the alleged people who were harassed by his brother. But yeah, that, that's what I'll end on. Yeah, no, and you know what? Whoever's been confronted with maybe a close family member getting into some madness that you maybe wouldn't get into, and now you're stuck in the position of either selling them out, saying nothing, or supporting them, that's the question. I feel like that's a question that gets asked all the time. I feel like it's in like a, a game sometimes, one of those like a, 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 a trivia, not trivia night, but game night games where you may ask a question. So your brother killed, not that this would happen, like a, a, a hypothetical. Your brother killed Bro, where are you going to you with and he came to you and he said, here, hide me in your house. What do you do? You know, it's one of those questions, right? And yeah. what do you do? You call well, the police and get his ass well, out of there. If, if we're being honest here. If I had a brother who doesn't exist, but if I had a brother and he said he killed someone, you know, I hate to tell you, I'm not helping you. Because now you're both going to jail. Duh. Yeah. You you think I'm gonna take the fall for something you did? No. No. Ricky Ricky is not that guy. Ricky will snitch on you.